Pretty soon we're going to take some questions from the audience, and I would remind you that questions do end in a question mark, uh, and that you should uh, and it should actually be a real question, not a statement or a proposal or a pitch or a threat or anything like that. Uh, there are some microphones, so get ready for that. Uh, I would be booed out of this building if I didn't ask both of you a couple questions about some other things you have coming. Peter, um, The Hobbit. <laughs> seen the latest blog that was on? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm having a hell of a time. Uh, you know, the, the delightful thing with The Hobbit, honestly, is that it's, I'm enjoying it way, way more than I ever thought I would, and I'm so pleased that I'm doing it. It's literally, I'm having a blast. I'm having a blast. I mean, we're, it, it's, it's an interesting way to um, to make a, a movie like that, having, because we're in a, a short break now, we start um, shooting it in a few weeks' time. We, we, we resume shooting it in a three weeks' time. We've done 60 days of shooting and got another just about 200 to go. So, almost there. Um, but when, when, we, uh, when we set out, uh, we wanted to, to, to cast Martin Freeman as Bilbo. We literally couldn't think of anybody else better. And Martin had already signed up to the new series of Sherlock. His, uh, Sherlock. So this break is actually somewhat enforced by the fact that Martin has had to return to the UK to do Sherlock, but it's terrific because it's, because it's allowed me to re-energise and we're doing a lot of pre-production for the next um, couple of hundred days of shooting. So but it's going fantastically well. And in, uh, Stephen, uh, I, there's a very long list here. Uh, you have War Horse, you have Lincoln, and then one I'm very excited about, Rogue Apocalypse. Uh, I really enjoyed the David Wilson novel. Tell us, uh, how do you keep it all straight? I mean, how do you, how, how do you juggle all that? Well, I've always done things, you know, you know pretty much, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of operate on about five or six different tracks, all running in the same direction. And I love doing multiple projects at the same time because one thing that directors lose, first first of all, the first thing the director, you know, really mourns the loss of, but happens to all of us, is our objectivity. And, and I find that when I do more than one project at the same time, I can go away and work a bit on, on Lincoln and then, let's say, come back to post-production on War Horse and really see it for the first time. So I use the projects to really you know, create some clarity in the way I can return and see what I can change, what I can shorten, what how I can make it better. So it, it's actually been a benefit to me, not, 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 not a deterrent. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, well let's see. I think we're going to try to take some questions from the audience. Are we ready for that? Oh. Mr. Spielberg, Mr. Jackson, I love you. choice because there is 24 Tintin adventures and, and, they're, and they're all different. I mean they go to different parts of the world, some of them are even different tones, different um, themes. But We wanted to start um, the cinematic uh, life of Tintin, as you could say, with a story that brought Captain Haddock and Tintin together because for us that relationship w was critical. And even though Hergé um, started the Tintin series without Captain Haddock in the 1930s, by, um, by 1939, 1940, he had developed the Captain Haddock character, and so we wanted that, that meeting between those two to be part of the first film. And that meeting comes from The Crab with the Golden Claws. So we've taken a section of that and we've grafted it into The Secret of the Unicorn as the, the body of the film, if you like, as the central part of the, of the mystery. And, and, and The Secret of the Unicorn was really chosen for various reasons. I mean, it was a great plot, it was a great story, and, and Stephen and I thought of ways in which we could expand and develop it a little, little further even to make, you know, the, turn the book into a movie. But it also, having developed um, this, this, the, the beginnings of this relationship with Haddock and Tintin, 
the Secret of the Unicorn goes into Haddock's uh, backstory. His ancestry is part of, is inherently part of the plot, and so that appealed to us because that, you know, that character of Haddock is being established um, in the movie. So it seemed to make sense to to start with that, with with those, that was a combination of those two stories.